Irish seafood. Easy to prepare and easy to cook for everyday meals. With Ben Bulbin behind me, there's no prices for guessing that today on my seafood trails, I'm in Sligo, being asked a tricky question. Do you know what Sligo means? I actually don't. Sligo comes from the word Sligoc, the Irish word Sligoc, meaning Shelley Place. And 6,000 years ago, people settled in Sligo because of the abundance of shellfish, oysters, scallops, and fish that lived here. There's a lot of history here with shellfish. Huge amount of history. Oysters are very like um, wine. So where they grow each bay, the look of the oyster, the shell, and the oyster itself will taste different. So in Sligo Bay, we have Knocknaray one side, we have Ben Bulb on the other side, and the Garavog flowing out through into Sligo Bay. These feed the oysters and give them their nutrients. And and that develops their taste. And where are we actually now? Right now we're out in Strand Hill. Mm -hmm. The tide is coming in, so I can't bring you out to see the oyster trestles, unfortunately, but we're going to go and see them be graded. You lead the way. OK. This is Noel Carter from Wild nice Atlantic Oyster. Noel, I've been out oyster beds before, but this is yeah. something different for me. What side of the operation are we looking at here? Here you're looking at the final grading before the market. The tractor came in this morning with a load of oysters that are mature, ready for sale. And they come in here to be graded into their final sizes. All the shell debris is taken out. And then they go into this machine here that sorts them out into six different sizes. How long did it take to mature? These will be four years old. From the time we get the seed out of the hatchery, uh, you're talking four full growing cycles. Is there any particular season for oysters? Traditionally, they used to be seasonal. There were suggestions about months with an oar in the month and all that sort, that's uh, right, sort of yeah. stuff. Not any longer, because we have a great monitoring system. So you can monitor the water and you can monitor the health of the, of the, of the fish. So really, it's 12 months of the year. And where do you sell your oysters? Most of these will go to um, Hong Kong, China, Singapore, places like that. Now, we sell a good portion of stuff into France, but only for the French Christmas market. There's a huge demand in France for the Christmas period. So we sell in bulk to the wholesale French market. But primarily we focus on the Asian market. So why do you grade the oysters in the different sizes? The market demands different sizes. Say, for instance, the Hong Kong market, there's a vast market for what they call bistro size oysters, which is a very small oyster. And then you go from that up to the restaurant sizes and all the way up to the, the biggest oyster you can get, which normally ends up in uh, Guangzhou in China because they can't come big enough for it. And what size is that oyster? It would be anything. I suppose the biggest we have gotten here is up around 200 grams, you know, but they're looking for 200 plus. And no one in Ireland do eat enough oysters here? Not yet, but I think we will, you know, eventually. You know, and I think the palate is changing and the appreciation for food. We can see in our local restaurants that we're supplying, it's increasing year on year. Traditionally, they were eaten natural, but you can cook them and do so many different things. Everything, them. everything. They're there to be used in the same, in the same fashion as, as, as any other food product. Now, talking about eating oysters, I'm going to head into town yeah. and we're going to have a lovely afternoon tasting some oysters. And I think Very it's a good. great uh, collaboration yeah. between the two of you, what you're doing. Brilliant. Yeah, well, you're in good hands here. Ah, she's great. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. you're a gent. Yeah. Keep up the great good. work. Good to see Thank you. you. Yeah. Sligo definitely makes the most of its connection with WB Yates, and Ashton brings her visitors here for the final and crucial part of the Sligo Oyster Experience. We do our little walking tour, show them around, and then they pop in here, we watch a little video of them harvesting, and then they get to sample the gorgeous oysters. You have an amazing display. So first of all, these are the natural ones here. Just yes. Opened. Natural, opened, little bit of lemon, or you could put a dab of Tabasco or ground black pepper, gorgeous. And would people be nervous about tasting a raw oyster? You know when you've never tasted it, it's a different sensation or mouthfeel. Exactly. What we do is we give them baked oysters. So our herb crust oyster is very popular. It's with thyme, breadcrumb, garlic, butter, absolutely gorgeous. And it's a lovely introduction to oysters. Now you have different dressed ones here. Talk me through these. We have drum shambo gin with mint and cucumber, oriental oh. salsa with fresh chili, and then we have sligo seaweed pesto. And these are the baked ones. So That's which is right. the most popular? 
The most popular is the herb crust with thyme and garlic butter. This is the one I'm going to taste. What about the other ones? You have a beautiful selection here. We have a lovely organic smoked salmon with cream cheese and chive, and then we have the four cheeses. And what cheeses do you use now? So we use Spanish hard cheese, Italian Parmesan, Dubliner cheddar, and cashew blue cheese. Sometimes people think you just eat them raw, but you can have them baked, and it's a lovely introduction to get them to try baked. It's really yeah. interesting what you were telling me about the different water. I see in the map there, there's a whole kind of a trail. I'm on part of the Taste the Atlantic Seafood Trail, and it's supported by BIM and Fulcher Ireland. So you can literally travel the Wild Atlantic Way from Donegal down to Cork, and stop at all different oyster farms, smoked salmon, mussel farms, you name it. Ashton, thank you so much. Keep up the great work. <laughs> Thanks very Thanks much, amazing, Nevin. Ashton. Another champion of the Sligo food scene is Chef Anthony Gray, whose Elabon restaurant is on the other side of the Garavogue River. Anthony, it's great to be in your kitchen. Thank you so much, Nevin. Good last, to see you. Last time I was here, we had our staff party, and I'll tell you, we had a fantastic, you looked after us so well. Thank ah, you. Thank you so much, Nevin, and it was an honour to take care of you. You had a great night. What are you going to cook for us today? Today, we got a lovely piece of haddock, mm -hmm. some nice Irish sea trout, and we have a Kilkeel scallop. We've taken the roe off it, nice fresh scallop. Gorgeous. And uh, ready to use. So we're going to do a trio of fish, Nevin. So, where do we start? I'm going to give this to Marcin. Yeah, he's Marcin's your head chef here. Good man, Marcin. Marcin's going to take yeah. it. Yeah, well, good, good to see you again. Martin's going to take it from here. Perfect. And what do you do with that then? Do you just pan fry it? Pan fry the haddock, finish it off in the oven. Uh, the same with the sea trout. And then last with the scallop. And then I'm going to plate it up and just add the ingredients into it and explain the ingredients. Where is it from? Its locality. But it's one thing you're very proud of is knowing where your ingredients are from. You have it on all your producers on the menu. I grew up in Sligo. Um, my father was a butcher. Um, he taught me all about food, he taught me the different cuts of food, but he also brought me fishing. I used to fish in Eastgate, Ballasadere, the Garavogue River, just out here. Often when I'm out front of house, and I explain the dish, and I explain the elements of the dish, but I also tell them where it's from. Our beef and lamb is from Charlotte's and Tupper Curry. Our fish comes in fresh from Killy Beggs and from Donegal. So how did the name come about, Elibon? My love of Yates and the wild swans are cool. And then one day, I pulled up the blind about two weeks before I opened. And lo and behold, there were two lovely white swans gliding down the river. And I thought, what's white swan in Irish? And it was Alabon. You opened up another restaurant just up the road. Hooked on Sligo, yeah, it's hooked on Sligo food. It's a total different environment than here. It's more casual, more funky, but again, it's all Sligo ingredients. Okay, Marcin, are we ready to go? Yes, we're ready to go. Excellent. Great smells here, Anthony. Oh, yeah, nothing I'll like get, it. I'll get your plate. Thank you. Lovely. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Marcin. Now, I'm just going to plate it up, Nevin. I have a lovely uh, carrot and ginger puree. Just a little touch. And, of course, your own carrots. Absolutely. Just a little bit of risotto, saffron risotto. Lovely flavour off the risotto. Absolutely fantastic. Lovely piece of haddock. You can yeah. see it's just nice and crispy there. Mm -hmm. So a lovely firm piece of haddock. And now the sea trout is cooked perfect. Well done, Marcin. Nice scallop. And again, it's nice seared. and soft, nicely yeah. seared. I love that. That's a nice crispy kale. What did you do with that? Just deep fry it? Just deep fry, fry it, ah. Chad, yeah, just to give it a bit of crispiness mm -hmm. and a little bit of salt on it. Some beautiful violas, maybe a little bit of honeysuckle, give it a nice colour. Tiny bit of pistachio crumb, just a little bit here on the edge of the plate and down across the top of the sea trout. Was it just toasted and blended? Just toasted, it? crushed down, and finally some nice dilsk. There's a lot of different textures and flavours in yeah. it. And it's so healthy and it's so good for you, and it's full of iron. Finally, oh. a little bit of lemon foam to finish it off. You look like Tom Cruise when you're doing that. Aren't you? I wish. <laughs> this is like a sauce, is it? It's just a little, a tiny bit of lemon foam. Mm -hmm. Gives a lovely zesty lemon flavour to it. Yeah. And it's just the whole elements, they all combine together. It's a very generous dish, I can tell you. I can't wait to taste it. So I'm going to start with the haddock. Beautifully cooked in the risotto. Hello, Marshy. Well done, exactly. Teamwork. Absolutely. Mm. That's delicious. That's a fantastic foam, that. Thank you. Wow. Delicious. You do a great job. Thanks very much. And promote Sligo as a food destination. Martin, great dish. Thank well done, chef. Thank you so much. Thanks Thank for having me here. A little further up the coast is Mullockmore, a holiday destination, very popular with surfers, but also a fishing village, well known for its lobster and crab. My host is restaurateur Etna O'Sullivan of Etna's By the Sea.
Edna, to think last weekend I was here with my family enjoying lunch in your beautiful restaurant and now we're cooking in Mullock Moor. Absolutely. What makes Mullock Moor so special for lobsters? The beautiful environment, the clean water, the rocky environment around the peninsula, the way it's sheltered so that the inshore fishermen can get out in the winter when others mightn't be able to. And we also have the Mullock Moor Sea Farm. They export directly from Mullock Moor nearly 50 tonnes of lobster every year. 50 tonnes is a lot of lobster, Edna. Is it all caught locally? No, they um, transport it back from as far away as the top of Donegal and even Bell Mullet and the d other directions um, along the northwest coastline. And, and, and where would the lobster go to? France. It's supplied to Holland. It's supplied to Norway. And uh, some of the crab actually goes as far as Beijing. So you're renowned for your lobster. I am. Are you <laughs> going to cook lobster for me, I think, today? <laughs> we are. We have a beautiful male and a female lobster. Do you just simply boil them, have you, or steam them? So I've just steamed them. So what dish um, are we going to make? Today I'm going to make a land and sea lobster with sea spaghetti and land spaghetti and some spices. Gorgeous. OK, what's yeah. the first thing we do? Cut the lobster meat out of the shell. I have some prepared already, but I have a claw left, a nice claw. So this is my claw hammer. I've had this for about 30 years. I've done a lot of uh, taking lobsters out of the shell. You have to hit it a really good thump. Absolutely. Brilliant. OK. And you just have to be careful. You, sometimes you get a lot of juice in the shell as mm. well. And I just place it on top of the other. I like the back of a teaspoon for taking this one out. The knuckle, you call that? Yes. Get the pan on oh, then. A tiny little bit of Donegal rapeseed oil. A little bit of shallot, some lemon and lime zest. A little bit of garlic, some chilli, some ginger and some lemongrass. Gorgeous. OK, I'll put the shallots first. Let them sweat off a little bit. Mm -hmm. This is the dried sea spaghetti. There's a lot of people harvesting seaweed and dehydrating it. I have just put it into water for about five minutes. I have cooked that as well. The sea spaghetti itself is a little bit nutty in flavour. We have it in our desserts, we have it in our breads, we have it in uh, some of the recipes that we use and we use the carrageen then to help thicken the chowder. It gives it a lovely flavour and it helps to thicken it as oh, well. Nice consistency, yeah. that's a good one. And then oh. I'll put in this. Garlic. Yeah. Chili. Yeah, so we make a lovely stock. The lobster shells, the crab shells, even spider crab, the heads of the prawns, smash them down. Onions, carrots, uh, some thyme, some bay leaf, peppercorns. Yeah, so what's we, in here we now? We have coriander, which I've already dry fried, cumin seeds, a little bit of turmeric, and a little bit of mild curry powder. I'm going to be gentle on the flavour okay. just to make sure that Super. we don't overpower it because now this. This lobster, there's a whole lobster here, two nice halves. It's mm -hmm. about an 800 gram lobster. That's brilliant. So, so you yeah. put in two ladlefuls of your so lovely... So I put in two ladlefuls of that. So I'll just let that. Now we make a pesto as well with a little bit of sea spaghetti dillus on Alaria. And we make it with lettuce and mixed leaves in the restaurant. It has an amazing flavour. Put a little bit of that in too. So I'm just warming this up so that the, all the flavours infuse into the liquid. I take my lobster. Is this your half a lobster and that you've cooked? And this is my half. Big chunks. Of beautiful lobster. Yeah. So we're just warming that up gently. Oh. That's just fresh pasta there, is it? This is Boulogne organic spaghetti. The sea spaghetti is very colourful. Looks nice on the plate. All right, I think we're nearly ready. What do you think, Looks Devin? Great. Yeah, are you looking forward that. to trying this? I am. What I'd like to do is get the land and sea spaghetti onto the plate Lovely. without making a big mess. Place the lobster nicely on the top. So that's your claw. People can see the meat, and yeah. when they're picking up a little bit of spaghetti, mix it through with a little bit of lobster, a little bit of spaghetti. The smell is great. Take some of the juice and place it around. It's all just flavours from the spices and flavours from the lobster stock. A tiny little bit of fresh coriander uh, that I've chopped up already. Some lovely cornflowers here, which the blue colour will add a contrast. You think of so, the sea, the blue. Yeah. <laughs> so, so is that ready for me to sample? Ready, ready for you. I hope you enjoy it. Gorgeous. Um, a little bit of the lobster and then just a little bit of everything. It's a great combination, I think, of spices and all. Mmm. Wow. That's so delicious. Nice. Mmm, it's more than nice. You know, I love to see spaghetti, the softness of the lobster, but the spices are wonderful. No, thank Etna, you. we love what you do. Keep up the great work. Thank you. I see you soon, so. Etna. Thanks. You might have Nevin's by the sea now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, one is enough, Etna. You're by the sea. Board beer. Bringing Irish seafood to the world.
Board Beer. Bringing Irish seafood to the world. I've noticed so many chefs using seaweed and people rediscovering the health benefits of seaweed, not just in their food, but also in seaweed bats and seaweed products. In Strand Hill, Neil Walton and his family have successfully revived the tradition of seaweed bat houses. Good morning, Neil. How are, How are you? you? Good, Good to see you again. See you too. Thank you very much. I read recently that over 100 years ago there was 300 seaweed bats in Ireland. Yes, there would have been dotted around the whole country, but mainly on the west coast uh, of Ireland. Uh, especially people, uh, when they're finishing the land, they would use the seaweed bats coming into the end of the summertime. So mainly for uh, uh, medicinal use, if they have any arthritis, bats, Aches, uh, skin conditions. The seaweed is packed with nutrients. Oh, it's fantastic! It's 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 the best form of micronutrition that you'll you'll get in any plant on the planet there, and that's because the environment that it's grown in, which is vitamin and mineral and rich. And is it any particular seaweed that you use? Yes, we use the Fuchtus serratus here, or the tooted rack. There is over 140 species of rack. In total, there's over 500 identified species in Ireland, but in the rack, there's around 140 species of it. So this is one we use, and it's traditional to seaweed bathing in Ireland. And it's very effective, it works, you know? So if you think about it like a very concentrated version of the sea, or like a tea bag releasing all the goodness into the water. And that's what this seaweed does, it just releases all the goodness. What does it do for the, like your body's like a sponge, so how, how does it get It is, it? yeah, so seaweed itself is like a concentrated version of the sea. So once it's in the bat, all the iodine, vitamin, minerals, and calcium alginate gel extracts out into the bath. So the bat then becomes a concentrated version of the sea. And your body then, as you said, acts like a sponge. It takes in all the nutrition from the bath there. Um, and, and you feel very relaxed as well. So tell me about the process. When you harvest this now, yes. what's the next stage? This goes back to the, the bats. Slight little wash. If it's cold, we'd steam seaweed to open up the pores. But at this time of year, we, we don't need to. It goes into the bath and then the seawater goes onto the seaweed. That turns the seaweed from the brown colour to a green colour. Releases all the alginate gel, iodine and minerals and then you just soak and uh, relax. As well as the bats, yes. you do other seaweed products? We do, yeah. We're the first certified organic seaweed-based spa and retail brand in the world. And everything is 100% organic. So the ranges go from hair, body, face, hand, and eye. And do you have to hand harvest, like you have the knife there, you're cutting yeah, it by every, hand? everything is hand harvest. So the tradition really hasn't uh, changed. I've seen your products, mm. you know, in many different places. Tell me where your products are available. Yeah, I think we're in 42 countries now at the moment. Uh, in, in, in Ireland, we're in a, a lot of hotels and spas. Abroad, i uh, say we're in the Burj in Dubai. Uh, we're in Emirate Airlines. But we're very proud here to be locally as well in, in the seaweed baths. So this is where it all started. And all your products are made in Sligo? Everything is made in Sligo. And a big range, haven't you? Yeah, a big range of products there as well. And everybody that takes on our products worldwide, we try and get them to buy into what we do and buy into uh, Sligo in Ireland so we would fly a lot of our customers over and they would come out harvesting with us then having seaweed baths and treatments there then to understand our passion and then hopefully then they would relay that passion to where they are you know Neil it's been fascinating Thank and you lovely very much. to see you and we're so yeah. proud to support Thank him Black Lion continue it. success thanks and ever appreciate it This is one of my favourite dishes that I make regularly at home, and it's a Thai broth. The secret to this dish is using the really best ingredients. Sweet, sour, sharp, it has all those flavours that I love. I'm going to show you two recipes in one, how to make the Thai broth, and then we're going to make a lovely trout wonton. I'm going to add in a little bit of crab. It's going to work really well with the Thai broth. So we'll talk about the ingredients. This is the Thai ginger. So I'm just going to open this out, hold it either side, and it's very different to fresh ginger, totally different. It's fresh, it's fragrant, it's more citrusy. Yeah, it's beautiful, so it is. So I'm going to chop this into nice big chunks. Because in Black Lion, we don't have an Asian market, but I'm on the road a lot, and I go up to Dublin, and I just get a couple of packets of this and throw them into the freezer. So that's one piece of the ginger, lemongrass. Now, lemongrass is so aromatic, so beautiful. You cut it open like this, and just with the knife, you split it down the centre. And the real flavour is down in the root. So say if you're poaching pineapple or poaching any kind of fruits, this works so well. So I'm just going to chop this again. We're going to release the flavour. 
This is a really important ingredient in this recipe, and these are called carf lime leaves. You can get them dried, but someone once told me that they lose 50% of their flavour when they're dried. So if you're poaching any kind of fruits or berries or even making fresh fruit salad, throw a couple of them in. And them are chilies. Now you need to be careful because these are the bird's eye chilies. Now in Thailand, they would eat chilies like we would eat a banana. They love chilies. So just be careful of that. I'm going to put in two of these small chilies. I have a saucepan here and it's just vegetable stock. You can use chicken stock or vegetable stock. So I'm going to get all my ingredients and put them in there. Now, coconut milk. This is the full fat coconut milk. We're going to put this in here. Gorgeous in a rice pudding. So if you're making a rice pudding, try a bit of coconut milk to finish it off. It's delicious. So scrape all that out. And then we're just going to whisk this. So I'm going to leave the whisk in there. We need to add more ingredients into this. Palm sugar, some nam pla. Now, in Thai cooking, they don't use salt. What they use is nam pla, and it's fermented fish sauce. Three large spoonfuls of this. And then you can readjust it if you think it's a little bit sweet because we're going to add in the sugar now, you can add more lime juice. So that's three of those in there. I'm going to put in a spoonful of tomato puree. It's going to give a nice bit of colour. Some sweet chilli sauce and then our brown sugar. So this is the palm sugar. Whisk all this together. Now to cut through that, we need lime. Just love the smell of lemongrass, lime, all those flavours. Now, so that's bubbling away. I'm going to let that just infuse there. I'm going to talk about our wontons. And what I've done is made a very simple trout mousse. So this is goat's bridge trout. So what I did, skinless, boneless, blend up a little bit of trout, a little bit of egg yolk, and then a little bit of cream in there. A touch of salt and nothing else. But now we're going to give it extra flavour. We're going to put in some white crab meat. So this is some beautiful brown crab. It's cooked. And then we're going to put in some chives, chop them nice and fine, and then a little bit of basil. Now you can tear the basil, which I'm going to do, just put it in straight away and then stir this right through. In the food processor, I made the mousse. And the reason why I didn't want to put the crab in is I wanted the texture from the crab, the smoothness and the beautiful flavor from the trout. These are the wonton wrappers over here. They're like an Asian pasta, so they are. A little bit of egg yolk, a little bit of milk, and we're gonna make a little triangle shape. So just one corner. Using a pastry brush, it makes it much easier. Try not to overfill them. Don't be tempted, oh, I want a really full wonton because they will just leak out. Put this into the center, roughly about a heap teaspoon. Now, just using this here, you press nice and gently, you fold it over, fold it over, and then you have a lovely little wonton like that. So that's what we have. So we'll do the same again. You could, of course, make your own fresh pasta and do the exact same thing I'm doing. And of course, in Italy, they would call that a ravioli. So bring it to the point, and then turn it, twist it, and press it. Boil and water. Good pinch of salt, and then we're literally going to poach them. You can steam them, I think they're better done like this, and keep the water rapidly boiling. These will take about two or three minutes, thereabouts. So while they're on cooking, I'll put the lid back on. It'll just speed up the cooking process. We're going to taste our Thai broth. Mmm. Oh, that's gorgeous. It's kind of warming, it's delicious, it's sweet and sour. It's just so good. So in Thailand, when they serve this, they serve everything like, you know, the galanga, the lime leaf, all that, but we usually pass it through a sieve. So after a couple of minutes, the wontons should be beautifully cooked. We'll just check one to make sure. I'm going to put on the board so the mousse should be cooked through. It's really, really soft, spongy, gorgeous. And that is the crab, and you can see that, the texture from the crab. With this, we're going to serve some pok choy. Put the pok choy into the same water, and we're just going to wilt this. It's a lovely oriental green. Using the slotted spoon, just push that down. So you're going to have the crunch of the pok choy and the lovely softness of the wonton. Now we're going to blend this just using a little hand blender. This gives a lovely lightness to this. So we're ready to serve up. So first of all, our pok choy. So that's it wilted there. See, if I put that straight into the bowl, the water's all going to run, and that's not what I want. So if you wanted to make these wontons ahead, you'd blanch them like I did, put them into iced water, store them in the fridge, and then simply steam them or warm them through in some boiling water. I'm going to get my bowl. The first thing we do is the pok choy. So arrange this. So you see it's soft and you still get the crunch. And then we're lovely wontons. I think I should give about four. Like, that's quite a generous portion there. And then just using a soup ladle. Completely cover this. You can actually hear the bubbles. Now, serve with a little bit of coriander. It's vibrant, it's fresh. Full of flavour, those lovely Thai flavours that are sweet and sour, a little bit of chilli. And of course, for me, the star of the show is that beautiful trout mousse. So that's the trout wontons with the Thai broth.
Irish seafood. Easy to prepare and easy to cook for everyday meals.